Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. Tech Talk. Tech Talk number 83. Tech Talk number. She does it again. Tech Talk number 83. <laughs> Uh, so if you're taking notes, I'm like, what show did they talk about this? You'll know it was on 83. Uh, what are we going to talk about tonight, George? Oh, we, we have a great video to start off with we, tonight. We did. We got a. We just did it this afternoon, an interview with the folks over at Mojave Audio, the makers of microphones like this very microphone right here. Um, and then uh, I'll talk a little bit about a few topics that I thought, thought what might be helpful, like avoiding buying overly <laughs> buying <laughs> solid state drives on Amazon with ridiculous sizes for the price. I'll, that's a thing. Um, window inserts, do they work? And uh, well, has Universal Audio Apollo fixed Zoom yet? Stay tuned. All right. All that and more. And I have a little bit of talk about what's the best mic for VO. <gasps> On Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk, right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver <laughs> Body Shop or VO. B.S. Tech, 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 tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech, tech Talk. Tech, tech Talk. Tech Talk. And actually from our studio and clubhouse in Sherman Oaks, California. For today. reals. Yeah. We're if like, I reach my arm long, far uh, enough. You know, we can actually like poke ooh. each other. Ooh. Yes. It's so weird. It, it is. It is. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we're going to get back in front of the green screen eventually and- for now, this is fun. Yeah, it's okay. It's a cool backdrop. Yeah. I do know we we will be having a live guest in beginning of August. Somebody who we really like having on the awesome. show. Awesome. Uh, who always brings alcohol, which is even better. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, if you have a question about your home voiceover studio, and despite the fact that we've been doing this 11 years, you guys still keep coming up with questions. And we are still coming up with the great answers. Uh, so throw those in the chat room and Jeff Holman will get that question to us in just a little bit. But today we did a, we did a road trip <laughs> and <laughs> it's been a while, but we did it again. Yes. We went out there and actually videoed something with us in the same place. And, uh, so our, we, we talked with Dusty Wakeman over at, uh, Mojave, Mojave Audio. Audio. How did we, how did we end up over there? Yeah. Well, uh, it was, it, it was our, you know, it's organic, you know, they, they, uh, I ran into Dusty over at NAMM show and he said, Hey man, it's good to see you again. Uh, gosh, how's things going over at the Don LaFontaine voiceover lab? Cause they were an early, early supporter of the lab, you know? And, and he was like, we need to get you a mic. And he sent me over this MA 50 mic right here to play around which with. Which sounds to, fabulous. To do a review, which I mm -hmm. will be doing a proper review of, I promise. Um, and then, uh, then it became, Hey, we have a YouTube channel. You want to come on our show? I was like, of course. And while we're there. 
can we interview you and show us his around the studio? And if we made it happen, Dan edited it for an hour, got it done just in time for you to watch right now. Go for it. <laughs> hey, let's go inside the Mojave office and see how they make these great microphones. Hey, hey look guys. who it is. Hey, Come it's in. Dusty. Hey. <laughs> Welcome. How's it going? Come on in. Welcome to Mojave World Headquarters. I appreciate somebody who has a neat desk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. It's <laughs> impressive, isn't it? You know, no, everything, it is. A place for everything and everything in its place. I yeah. did tell him you guys were coming, so it's probably a little neater than oh, it okay. normally <laughs> is because, you know, there's a lot going on over here. But, uh, you know, we all of our tube mics we burn in over here for 24 hours. And then all of our microphones, David listens to everyone, every single one. And actually signs a card, I'll show you. There's a little card like this that goes in with every mic that after he signs it, or after he inspects it, he signs it and dates it. Looks like he's pre-signed somebody, he hasn't dated it yet, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's got to fill in the blanks. But that happens over here. And then our highest end microphones, the MA37 and the MA1000, actually get built here or finished here we installed the capsules transformers and tubes here and then this is all shipping and receiving these are mics that are all good to go ready to go out to customers and to dealers and more more boxes boxes and more boxes and this is our storage room uh these are boxes full of tubes we were fortunate that we stocked up a long time ago so we have tubes for all of our models for the foreseeable future, probably past my lifetime in this business. And then these are all capsules and all the other parts that go into our, our microphones. So people wonder what it is that makes a high-end mic a high-end mic. I mean, we use, you know, most of the people in voiceover use a good studio condenser mic, but what really separates it and what is it that Mojave is putting in their mics to create what we would call a high-end mic. Well, there's a couple of things involved in that. One, our secret weapon, David Royer, designs them. So it's his, I call them simple yet elegant designs, which is something I stole from the wine world. But I love the <laughs> sound of that. Simple yet elegant. Yeah. Uh, our mics, if you open them up, there's not a lot of circuitry going on. We don't heap on a lot of special sauce circuits like you know three different microphones in one we don't do anything like that right. what we do put our money into and what really makes a difference is the quality of the components there's a capsule mm -hmm. that's a capsule for our ma37 yeah. the chinese many many moons ago and we were just talking about the mic that you refurbed um, standardized cap capsule making so they're very consistent. Like we don't see a lot of variation. We never have any problem with them. They came up with a jig because the a lot of them are hand tuned mm -hmm. like a drum, and that's great. But out of one batch, you'll get some great ones and some not so good ones. Right. Well, they figured out a long time ago how to just use a jig and standardize it. So boom, boom, boom. They're all the same. And then you've got the other things like the the quality of the fets, the resistors, the capacitors the tubes, all those components, it's an audio chain. So in any audio chain, it only sounds as good as the worst piece, the worst link in that chain. Right. So we're all about having high-end quality components. All the way through the chain. All the way through the chain. And yeah. that's what really makes the difference. So what, what component has the biggest impact on the quality of the sound within a microphone? As you were saying, there's lots of different things within the, the circuitry, but what's most important? Well, I would say, Oddly enough, it's not the capsule, which most people think. It's not the tube, which a lot of people think. Two, microphones aren't like guitar amps. In a guitar amp, you're really driving that tube, right. and that really, you're getting a lot of sound from that or a lot of coloration. With a microphone, you don't want that. You want high fidelity, you want performance. So the tube is not making a huge difference in the sound as long as it's providing all the proper voltages for everything to work. I would say probably the transformer or the amplifier, probably you hear the difference more than anything else. But like I say, it's an audio chain. You hear mm -hmm. whatever the weakest thing is, that's what you're hearing. Right. Mm -hmm. And let me turn this around. Mm -hmm. There you can see the tube. Nicely so this, this oh, is an MA300. It's our multi-pattern large diaphragm tube condenser. Basically David Royer's take on the classic U67. So the question is, 
why use tubes? I mean, I love old radios and I, and I play with them and I understand that they create a certain amount of harmonic distortion and stuff. Why are tubes essential to a, a good quality mic like well, this? Well, they're not essential because we do make mics with FETs. Right. So you either have a tube or a FET. A FET is the field effect transistor. Mm -hmm. That's the modern replacement. And I say modern from when we were kids and the little <laughs> Japanese transistor right. radio showed up <laughs> and they re started having those instead of tubes. But tubes give a certain warmth, and like you say, harmonic distortion, a, a pleasing distortion that creates the, the good harmonics. Right. So it can sound a little warmer, a little smoother. But really, David is just an old school designer. He's really using it to achieve high fidelity performance more than coloration. Why is this important, say, for a voiceover person? Well, for voiceover, I mean, we have people that use all of our mics, of but the ones that the voiceover people seem to like most are the FET mics. The 201, which is a cardioid only, and the 301, which is the multi-pattern version of that. Because the FETs are a little bit faster, they have a little more presence, a little more grab, if you will, of the voice. And especially some of our people like uh, Toby Browning and some people like that that are doing commercials where there's explosions and car crashes and stuff right. that, where the vocal has to cut through, right. like movie trailers, th that kind of stuff. So they seem to prefer the FET mics. These are all coming from different places. You're, you're, you're just assembling all these things. We use a factory in China to yeah. do all of this stuff, the metal right. work, right. all the parts. And then some of the mics are, are finished there. Like I said, the MA-37 and the MA-1000, which are, are high, high-end mics, they're finished here. Big John puts them together over here, and he installs these things and the tube. Um, and, but all of them get burned in here and, and go through our QC. What makes the difference in cost and quality? I mean, you're, not, you're using high-quality components in every mic. What makes the difference between you know, say between a five hundred dollar mic and say a five thousand dollar mic or something. Like well, you know, people always wonder that one for some reason. You know, that's an interesting question. I mean, I'm an old studio owner and recording engineer, and the difference between a five hundred dollar mic and a five thousand dollar mic is not. You help me with the math here. Is that ten okay. times? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's not <laughs> ten times better. It's you know, the higher in, higher up you go, the more it becomes incremental, and it just depends on how much of a geek you are. You know, I would think in the voiceover world, it's really more about having one or two mics that get you quickly to where you want to go. Right. The, yeah. the idea being that, you know, you want to be able to sound the way you sound, capturing you as you exist, and that's what you want to hear. And you right. don't want it altered or colored a whole lot. Right. And you've gotten feedback from your customers that, like, love, love the sound of your voice. So it's like, check, don't change anything. Don't change, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Not going to like, well, let's audition, you know, for this commercial, let's audition a bunch of microphones. You're right. probably not going to do that right. in the VO world. George might do that. Sounds like he... Some, we, we, we some, do some people are known for being a little over the top with the mic selection pro but uh, I tend to say, you know, pick a couple that you love and stick with them because consistency is a pretty big deal. Right. And, you know, I know a lot of voiceover artists are doing auditions all day long. And right. You don't have... You need to go flip a switch and hit record. So yeah, that's exactly that, what it is. That's one reason our FET mics, the 301 FET, the 201 FET, and the MA50 are really good for voiceover work. What are some of the things that can really damage a mic? If you're, what things are people doing that they're not taking good care of a good mic? Well, with Phantom Power, it's always good to have the Phantom Power off until you actually connect the mic and then turn it on. Uh, always make sure your speakers are turned down. And if you're wearing headphones, you might want to slide them off. <laughs> Those yeah. are good practices. I, I still have ringing in my ears from the 70s. So right. I, it's like, yeah. Right. Those are all good practices. If you have a tube mic, you want to make sure it's all connected and the power supply is turned on. Right. Question I've always wondered about, uh, say on a multi-pattern mic, how do you change the patterns? What is the electronics doing that, you know, it's got, you've got a diaphragm and all that. What is it that allows it to be omni or figure eight or, or cardioid? So on a on a multi-pattern mic like this it's a dual diaphragm mm -hmm. right so in cardioid that the back one the back plate is just turned off mm -hmm. and you're just getting the front with the for omni you're adding in the back diaphragm in phase mm -hmm. so now you're picking up 360 you're getting both of those on 
And then to get figure eight, you flip the phase of the back one. So now they're out of phase, with front and back are out of phase. So you're picking up here, you're picking up here, but it's null all the way around right. all the other lobes. Yeah, Dusty, thank you for showing us around. My we pleasure, it's great it. to have you. I was just gonna say, yeah. if you go on our website, yep. MojaveAudio.com, there's a whole section for voiceover Excellent. with examples for every mic that we make. We have professional voiceover artists giving examples of what that mic sounds like. Yeah. So it makes it easy to go on there and kind of take a look in advance if you're in them, if you're shopping for a microphone. Yeah, I, that's I, that's the interesting thing is that you know the, there are no companies specifically making microphones specifically for voiceover. I right. mean, it's like it's all primarily designed for making music. Right. So, but you've you've actually created microphones that are easy to adapt to doing voiceover work. Well, your voiceovers are music to our ears, so <laughs> it is music. Remember that. I always, always love learning things when we get to talk to these uh, company representatives and owners in this case. Yeah, and, and I like that he answered some of these tech questions that they're, they're a mystery to most people. I still want to know what it means to be fast. You notice, you notice he mentioned the he word did. fast. He I, did. I've heard that used in, in talking about preamps and things, and I still need a good description of what that means. But uh, unfortunately, my mic is muted, so I'm... I'm I'm going to mute, mute my, my, unmute, mute my, my mic. mic. Now I, I can, can hear myself. myself. But, but Sue's, Sue's saying, saying no. no. I'm. Wait, why, why am I, why is it saying, oh, I was, am I still gone? You're on. I can see, I can oh, okay. see your okay. levels okay. on there. So with, <laughs> it's all out of lost audio. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, it was great having such a straight shooter to, to talk uh, about the way the mics are made. It was right. really cool. Right. And he gave us a hat, which is even more important. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what's what else you got in your tech update? Well, this just week? a couple of things. I won't go on for too long. But um, recently, I was like, you know what? I need to get a bigger backup hard drive. So I started searching for large capacity hard drives, and it's you can buy for three hundred dollars now a fourteen terabyte external hard drive from Western Digital, which I was considering actually getting just to have a single drive that backs up all of my archive drives because. I realize I have a whole bunch of hard drives that are archive, meaning that they only have the, the, uh, the, the data on that drive is only on those drives. It doesn't exist anywhere else. And then I thought, well, let's go, go buy one. So I did some research, went to go look on Amazon. Then all of a sudden I stumbled on 16 terabyte SSD drives, solid state drives for one hundred dollars. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. One hundred dollars. And then there was a bunch of reviews. And I posted about this on the VO Tech Talk Facebook group for for the geeks over there to laugh about and read. The comments on the on the, the reviews were all over the map because what they do over there at Amazon is they allow a a, a product a, a, a merchant to essentially swap out the product so they can build up comments over time selling a bunch of products cheap stuff like a hat <clears throat> or whatever <throat> and then they can essentially refresh the product and change the product and that's exactly what they did they had over 100 reviews most of them all five stars so this thing was visible it was floating to the top of the search it looked really legit because it had so many great reviews but when he started reading them they were on completely unrelated products I did a little more digging, did a little more research, some YouTube video watching, found out it's crap. These drives may lose you a ton of data. Don't buy them. So the takeaway is if you're looking for solid state drives, chances are if it's under $100 and it's more than a terabyte, it's probably BS. Um, it's probably not true. You also want to buy solid state drives from reputable manufacturers like SanDisk, uh, Kingston, other companies known for making those things, and be very careful. Don't buy things that seem way, way too good to be true in storage because guess what? It is, and you're going to be upset when you find out uh, you've lost a ton of data. Yeah, uh, really? Beware. Um, windows in, window inserts. Not windows, window. Not windows, like, yeah. Open the sash, windows. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, James Romick uh, posted on a, on a group recently about his experience with Indo Windows. And uh, I've seen these, I've installed them, and I've recommended them. And his takeaway was, it wasn't as, effect as effective as advertised, which didn't surprise me. Um, and the thing is, when, you look, when they're looking at these, when they're selling these products, they're giving you these figures sometimes, 70% improvement. 
uh, in noise. And the thing is, that's extremely dependent on the type of noise. Is it <laughs> and how loud is it? How out loud there? is it? The type is it? Is it low frequency rumble? Right. Is it a lawnmower? Is it bird sounds? Uh, these kind of window inserts are only like eighth to a quarter inch, if you're lucky, thick of plexiglass. And um, they have a good tight seal on them, which helps a lot. But it's still not enough mass, and it's still not enough depth uh, of an air gap to get rid of lower frequencies. So don't expect a lot at the lower end. But if the types of sounds you are wanting to reduce dramatically are sound of the wind in the trees, birds, higher frequency sounds, maybe a distant highway, that kind of stuff, yeah, they, they really, really help a lot. But they will not get rid of lawnmowers and rumbling engines and, and just low frequency crud. Um, don't expect that. Like if a tank is rolling by or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, or even if just even if the neighbor's mowing their lawn, you're you're still going to hear it. It's it's going to help a little, but it's not going to completely fix it. Um, lastly, before we move on, um, you all, I am I am going to be teaching a webinar on Universal Audio Apollo, and one thing that probably people maybe have been wondering is if they haven't used one in a while, or maybe they haven't used Zoom in a while, is has Universal Audio fixed? Zoom or fi has Universal Audio fixed their driver so it will work properly with Zoom? See, the problem with Universal Audio's Apollo, compared to a nice, straightforward, simple audio interface like a Scarlett 2i2, something where it's just two channels in, two channels out, the problem is, is that Universal Audio's audio inputs and outputs all appear simultaneously in Zoom with absolutely no way to control which of those channels you're actually using in Zoom. So Zoom just looks at the first two channels. Like an Apollo has 14 inputs, I think, last I checked. Uh, and it may not have 14 inputs on the back, but there are 14 input channels available. And then there's like 10 output channels, and Zoom uses the first two of the inputs and the first two of the outputs. Guess what? Those are not the ones you want to use with Zoom. So the problem you have is that you get echoes, you get weird phasiness in headphones sometimes. Uh, a lot of things go wrong when trying to use Zoom with the Apollo. So um, it hasn't been fixed since the newest updates in console 10 point whatever, the newest one. It has not been fixed. It still happens. And I don't know if anybody's ever going to fix it, even though folks like myself, Tim Tippett's, Jordan Reynolds, Tim Friedlander, all of us have been telling them, time to fix this, guys. Um, it doesn't seem to be a high priority. In fact, their own tech guy says, oh, just install this $100 extra other program called Loopback to fix the problem. <laughs> I just don't think that's the right way of approaching it. No, that's um, kind of like walking through the back door to make something work, and that's uh, It's idea. really frustrating. Anyway, it's one of the reasons why Apollo is something I don't recommend without a lot of asterisks, a lot of disclaimers. And if you are going to get it, you really need to learn how to use it. And that's what I'll be teaching in my webinar coming up in a couple of weeks. Good luck with that. Thanks, man. Anyway, <laughs> Dan, we're going to talk about the best mic for VO. Is it this one? Uh, Tell well, me, is this one right Well, that here, one, right? I mean, it sounds great, but yeah, it, it sounds it good. sounds as, very much the same as mine. But you It know, does. Uh, it sounds uh, very much the same as yours. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of the same <laughs> components, I think. It's probably a lot of the same components. Yeah. Hand-picked components. Yeah. Everybody asks this question, and we've, we've, we've joked about this before. You know, like, what, we, if you have a question, uh, the question is always, what's the best mic, mic for voiceover? Right. And it depends on... A lot of things. One, how much you want to spend. Two, uh, how much, um, you know, how, what kind of a voice do you have? See, and I still don't buy the argument about what's the best mic for my voice. I mean, there's, you can, you can keep it limited to a couple of things. Now, it was interesting in that video that the Dusty Wakeman explained to us what goes into the mics and what makes them really, really good. That's a good mic. There are a lot of mics that really suck. But they're like under $150. If they have bad components, if they the amplifier and the transformer in it are, are top notch, you know, they went and bought them at Woolworths or something. And, or they're and, inconsistent from mic to mic. And they're inconsistent. Absolutely. They're uh, big time. Uh, so I'm of the opinion, and you can, you can disagree with me all you want. I mean, I tend to find the best mic for voiceover is the one you got if you have one that's over $150. It's the sound you have. It is what your clients are used to. 
I doubt there is anybody out there that has a good microphone that is somewhere between 150 and say $300 that is losing work because of that microphone. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody losing work because no. of that type of a microphone, unless it's a crappy microphone and we you know, damaged d- damage, you know, it fell over. They didn't have their ABS on there. Uh, the adjustable boom stop from Harlan <laughs> Hogan. It should be a hundred over $150 generally. Yeah. Low self noise, right? Low distortion, right? And the mic that you have is probably the mic that you actually need. And look at an aspirational mic when you're ready. Dan, you always say this. Don't buy really expensive equipment to get the work. Get good work, mm-hmm. make get- money, and then get better gear. Exactly. So this this mic right here, this um, this is the Mahami MA50. This could be an aspirational mic for some. Yeah. But it's a $500 mic. This is their entry level. You don't start there. You don't need to start there. Right. You could if you have the budget, but you don't need to. This could be your aspirational microphone, or this could be your first mic, depending on your budget. Right. So, yeah. But, um, but what good is the mic if you don't use it right? So yeah. that's acoustics, all that stuff. Really is important. Critical. All righty. Well, I've got some editing to do tonight. Anyway, we're going to take a break right now. We'll get to your questions right after this. Do enough editing already. Yeah, that's right. I'm in good practice. We'll be right back on VoiceOver Body Shop. Get send in your questions, kids. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Inflated prices? Not at VoiceOverEssentials.com. Despite the nationwide inflation rate of over 8%, VoiceOver Essentials refuses to raise prices. In fact, they refuse to even say the I-word. Their inventory is large on all their products, and they purchase them before the current economic conditions. It's simply wrong to increase profit, as many retailers are doing right now. So Harlan and company promise not to raise their prices during difficult times for everyone. They'll stay the course, steady and sure, flat and firm, solid and steadfast. Okay, enough. You get the point. Unfortunately, they're under the same inflationary pressures as everyone else and they'll need to restock in the not-so-distant future. No doubt, they'll be sticker shock for them and you. So, right now is the time to order that Portabooth Pro or VO1A voiceover microphone and their VO2.0 headphones. Fight inflation at voiceoveressentials.com. Hey, everybody. It's time to talk about Source Elements. Yay! Our sponsors for a very long time here on Source, uh, uh, on VOBS. And their flagship product, as you probably know by now, is Source Connect for a very good reason. It has definitely established itself as a um, as a must-have technology at the best in the best projects out there because these are companies that understand how workflow is important to getting things done. It's efficient. The client can hear you, the voice talent, during the session real time. The audio that is being heard is being recorded directly into the timeline of the production. And it's done in a very smooth and easy to understand way for the, for the engineer because it actually works as a plugin into Pro Tools as well. No, you don't need Pro Tools, but a producer and engineer loves that it will appear magically in Pro Tools. It even has a cool thing called, called the, uh, the Q Manager, which can automatically fix dropouts from bad internet connections. It's really, really amazing stuff. And if you want to be on, uh, basically on the bandwagon because you're getting those bigger clients, you're getting agents, and you're starting to see Source Connect as a requirement to get those big jobs, it's time to go over and get your free trial and get started at source-elements.com and get the ball rolling and let them know we sent you because they'd love to know that people are finding out about them from us we'd appreciate that let's get right back to those questions right after this well hello there i bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for snapchat were you this is virgin radio well okay we're not that innocent there's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working dickies because i ain't here to look pretty she's a champion of progressive values a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. 
But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. All right, we're back in one piece, which is the best way to be. <laughs> now it's time for... Our lightning round of answering your questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, let's get into our questions here. All right, okay. The first one I actually grabbed from Facebook myself because I just thought it was a good question. To Excellent. Get things started tonight. This, Greg, you don't, if you're watching, I don't know if you are, but if you are, this is for you. Um, Greg says, uh, Greg Thomas says, is, is it normal for two of the same make and model of a microphone to sound slightly different from each other? Is this why they sell matched stereo pairs um i'm glad he met it was great timing that that question came up because as as you saw in the video earlier from dusty some of the key things in microphones sounding the same is the way the capsules are being made and they have to be made and tested to make sure that they sound consistent from mic to mic and depending on the price point of the mic you're buying who's selling it the lower end microphones tend to not be matched and checked to sound that they sound to to see that they sound identical. And yes, um, the best microphones you'll notice can be bought in stereo pairs. And it's almost always more expensive than buying two mics, as crazy as that sounds. But it's true because they do actually go through an extra level of testing and comparing at the factory to make sure they output the same exact level within a decibel of each other and sound as identical as possible. So. Um, I think it's less of a trouble than it used to be um, because of manufacturing practices being so good now. Um, but that is definitely an issue that needs to be checked out. And uh, buying an older mic and a newer mic, they might sound different. Another thing is, if you bought them at different times of the year or different year, you know, years apart, your old mic will almost always sound a little less crisp mm -hmm. and bright, right? Right. They get dirty. And as the as dirt and scum gets on that capsule and everything, it damps the capsule so it doesn't respond as quickly, and you lose some top end. So that's another thing he mentioned that a newer mic sounded more forward, it sounded brighter and crisper than an older mic, and that would probably explain why that happened. Right. But when someone has a microphone that might sound slightly different, it's just is it going to not make them sound as good that someone could that it was be not perceptible slightly. by an engineer right. that it's like, it's not going to make that much of a not difference. Slightly different. Like, uh, you know, if you're look, listening to it under a microscope, it's only because you're comparing an older one to a newer right, one. Right. But the likelihood of one mic booking the job and the other one, not extremely, extremely low. Um, unless one of them is actually damaged. Ah, so, and that, then that will make a difference. And I've, and I've heard that. Uh, Grace Newton asks for the guys that would be you and me. Uh, I have the Scarlett Solo interface. Will you please explain the function of the direct mon what the uh, function of the direct monitor button is? I never record with my headphones on, and I always turn it off while editing, so I don't really know what it does. Guess what? If you don't use your headphones, it you don't, don't matter. It. <laughs> you don't need it because that's <laughs> yeah, what it's for. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. It's uh, yeah. There's a there's a direct monitor button on the focus rights. It's. Uh, Right under, right under the the phantom power button, right? Yeah, here. on the older one, it's a switch, and on the newer ones, it's a it's a push button. Right, and 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 what it does is it allows you to hear yourself. Um, and you know, if you're not wearing headphones, which you you know, as you know, I say, don't wear headphones unless you're trying to listen to a director somewhere else. Um, then just, then just keep the you know direct monitor off. It really doesn't help. What direct monitor is for is if you're as all of this stuff was designed for, if you are a singer and you are syncing up with other tracks in a multi-track program, that's what the direct monitor for, is button is for. So you can hear the other stuff that's going on and your voice in sync with that. And that's 
pretty much what it's for. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, if you're engineering yourself and you want to check things, test things, make sure they're working, direct monitor can be useful so you can hear what's actually going on. But acting while listening to yourself at the same time, being fed back into your headphones at a loud volume, even when it's not delayed, if it's zero latency, it's still distracting and it is still going to affect the way you perform. Guaranteed. Absolutely. You get the next one. All right. This one's from Zachary Chalmers. Hey, Zach. Um, is there a way to use an external Bluetooth receiver on a Mac Studio? Either switch or default to the external receiver because my Magic Mouse or trackpad are a bit too far from the Mac Studio in the adjacent room. Thanks, guys. That's a good techie question. Yeah. I would say um, there are many, many USB Bluetooth receivers out there. Um, you might pl plug one of them into a long extension so that it's closer to the space where your mouse and uh, trackpad and keyboard are. I have found that with my Mac Mini M1, it's really crappy with my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. Um, I always leave my trackpad. I have the Apple trackpad. I always leave it plugged in. And when it's plugged in, it's actually not just charging. It's actually connected to the Mac. Same with the keyboard. So if you're using the Apple keyboard and the Apple, Apple trackpad, you can plug them in with USB to a hub, old school style, and now they are permanently charged and hardwired to your Mac. But if you really got to be wireless, um, just get a, get, get a Bluetooth receiver dongle for 20 bucks on Amazon uh, and uh, extend it and give that a shot. I don't know how to get the Mac to prefer one over the other. That's, uh, that's going to take a little Googling or... Uh, asking on some Apple tech forums because I don't know the answer to that question. All right, yeah, and I Bluetooth. I mean, I I have a Mac Magic Mouse. Now this is this is not Bluetooth. This is just this is uh, is it Bluetooth? Yeah, it is Bluetooth. Oh, it is Bluetooth. It That's is. right. The yeah. thing about that one is that the one that takes batteries or the one that you have to recharge. You got to recharge this one, and it's in the bottom of the friggin' mouse. Yeah, like, so yeah, it needs so, to be in the end of the mouse where you can plug it in and yeah. charge it while which, you're using which is it. Why I always keep <laughs> a wired mouse hooked exactly. up. Exactly. <laughs> when that happens, it's 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 all of us do it. Except I no longer do now because I use the trackpad. And I leave it plugged in all the time. But yeah, yeah that's just, a, you know, Apple gets it right 90% of the time. The other 10% of the time, they do bonehead stuff, like put the charger on the bottom of the mouse where you can't plug it in. Right. But <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm sure they're sitting there in the design meetings going, eh, just put it here. You know, there's no place on the bottom where you, you know, so yeah, design, you know, they're very, they're, they're very specific about their design requirements, but sometimes they just lose it. Uh, Grace Newton asks again, uh, do you know someone reputable who offers a twisted wave course? I'm hesitant to go to YouTube route as there's a ton of misinformation on them interweb thingies. Well, we've both done it. You've done one. I've done one. You've done one extra. I've done a series of them in the last year. Um, so if you want to see Dan's go over to voiceover extra and just type twisted wave. Yep. And then you want to find mine, George, the dot tech slash webinars. Everything I've ever taught on George the Tech is on that page, including all of my uh, Twisted Wave stuff. So, yeah, there you go. You know, we, we actually failed to mention at the top of the show. Sue says you're a little hot right now. Oh, well, reason. I can I can turn it down. Perfect. There. Perfect. there we go. Thanks. Right. Uh, I, probably because I got a little closer to the mic. You and I do something that basically no one else does, and that is work on home voiceover studios. And if you're exclusively, you're watching, <laughs> exclusively. now yeah. there are people out there that are like, yeah, I've been doing this for five years, so I can teach it. Yeah. Well, there, you know, there's, it's not a perfect science. It really is an art. And George and I are the Picasso and <laughs> Monet's of home voiceover studios. How is that for a, a bizarre segue? <laughs> um, there's a, there's very specific things you have to think about with a home studio. Every room is different. Every voice is different. Every situation is different. You, we have to consider your lifestyle. How is it that you want, you know, how is it that you want to be able to use your home studio? I was working with a, a, a some clients last week, a studio sent me over to talk to somebody and they're like, well, I wouldn't want to do this here in my living room. I'm like, well, do you have a closet? Well, no, this is the only place that I can do it is here. And I don't want to put up a room divider and I don't want to have all this stuff. And I'm like, then 
you're not it, there's no way to make you sound great without a whole lot of technical wizardry and we don't want to use the technical wizardry we want to create a studio that recreates or captures you as you exist and uh so that's what we do we find the best spot in your particular home uh to set up a studio whether it's in a closet whether you think you need a booth whether you got a really quiet room and we can build you a you know a pvc booth or recommend something like the the tri booth or something along those lines those are the types of things we do and people ask us these quite types of questions it's when they get into the really specific stuff like how big should the duct be on a on an exhaust system on an air vent and what type of fan and it, really specific stuff well guess what we actually know the answers to those things and 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 because we know how to look them up we know how to google them uh but we've also experienced it ourselves we built these these units ourselves we know what it takes to do that if you would like to work with one of us and get the top-notch expertise you need to have your home voiceover studio recreate you and capture you as you exist you can work with one of us. If you'd like to work with Mr. Whittem, where would they go? Oh, you can head over to George the dot tech. That's my name is my address. Uh, that's where all my tech support uh, access is. You can find a tech menu with a whole menu of different types of services that we provide. And if you're really in a pinch and you need an emergency support, yes, we do have that. We have a phone number, a hotline. You can call 424-226- 8528 and press the option nine and that goes to our emergency support help desk dispatch it sends off my beeper <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more low tech than that they literally just start calling our list of uh, approved and really talented techs that we have and uh you will get patched through to somebody uh asap um when i'm not available so it's a uh, it's we we love that plan and it's helped a lot of people uh, save a big gig. So those are ways we can help you. Dan has his own world over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. A uh, brand new site. It finally got, it's up there. The specimen collection cop is right up top. Uh, so if you want to drop off a specimen of your audio, uh, you know, unprocessed, the way you re would record without, you know, compression and noise. Read, I want to hear what your studio sounds like when you use it and uh you can uh, send that to me for 25 dollars, i will give you a very thorough analysis of what your audio is sounding like as opposed to what it's supposed to sound like unless of course it sounds like what it's supposed to sound like in which case <laughs> i will tell you guess what it sounds what it's supposed to sound like <laughs> whistle yeah, exactly so should we uh, do a more light lightning round? We still have a few more, a few more here. Questions. Yeah, Douglas the voice guy asks, so which mics are Dan and George using today? Well, well, this is the Mojave, the Mojave 50 yeah. and then Dan's got something really, really unique. Yes. Well, this is a, a homemade mic. I mean, I mean, it's not homemade. I mean, I made it here in the studio, but uh, from our friends at mikeparts.com. And it was a, a donor body from an old MXL 2001, which was a really lousy mic. Uh, but I got it for free when I bought something else. 20 something years ago. Yeah. I, I mean, 20, 20, 21 yeah. years ago. Uh, -huh. uh, but it's, we stuffed it with new stuff. I did all the soldering. I did all the stuff that we saw earlier that, that Dusty Wakeman and his guys over at Mojave do. And it's got a, 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 a K47 capsule and the right, uh, stuff in it. And that's why George and I sound almost exactly the same tonight. <laughs> it's surprisingly similar and, and very much so which is which is good because usually you know if you're on your i'm on often your, on a shotgun mic yeah, or who it, knows it what sounds I'm very it sounds very different yeah. so anyway also we're in the same room well that helps too and we're in the same environment we're running through the same exact preamp right in the same mixer there's a lot of reasons that we could get such similar sounds tonight. it's hard to beat being in the same place right so that's why we're going to start being in the same place far more often we can yeah. that's right we're going to have to wear hazmat suits but that, <laughs> that doesn't matter uh jeff holman has a question he says if you were building a booth in an unfinished basement what would the walls and floor and ceiling be made of well in an unfinished Lots basement wood and concrete <laughs> oh you well, mean the floor would be concrete yes you would just leave it right on the floor right there's no reason to have a floor you can put down a rug but you don't need to put a floor in right um the ceiling uh 
the ceiling's much more complicated because if there's anybody walking around upstairs, you're going to hear footfall. And I, I I guarantee it. It's uh, I've seen some very expensive builds uh, come out where someone's like, yeah, they didn't do it right. And I can hear people walking around upstairs. Yeah. It's, it mm -hmm. is the uh, most difficult thing to get right is the, is the ceiling, the walls. I don't know. Drywall studs, Mm -hmm. insulation, quiet rock. Yeah. I mean, it's the walls are not are pretty simple in a basement setup, right? They they don't have to be mega, mega walls because unless there's going to be another family down there with you or your family or who knows what down there making noise, you don't need to do a lot basement to get rid of sounds from the neighbors. So if you're below ground, below grade, there's not much noise coming in from the outside. That's right. And of course here in Southern California, who has a basement? Yeah, maybe Jeff's. Maybe Jeff, Jeff are you, does. Are you hinting that you're moving, or yeah. did you get a house with a basement? <laughs> well, his movie career has been taken off. He HBO could, is working out. That's right. He he can afford one of those houses over in Beverly Hill. <laughs> Load up the truck. <laughs> Load to Beverly. Uh, All right. <laughs> last one from Bob. Lead him in the YouTube. He says, "In another week or so, I'm about to get delivery of the new." M2 MacBook Air. Ooh. Ooh oh. Uh, can I use Migration Assistant on my own to transfer contacts from computer to computer? Well, yeah, that's just one of a thousand things that Migration Assistant will transfer. Um, but the contacts will come over as long as you're using, assuming you're using Apple stuff. Like if you're logged into iCloud and you're using uh, the contacts on your iPhone and your Mac and all that kind of stuff, all that stuff, yeah, it should migrate over pretty nicely. Um, I don't know if I would migrate every, like, I don't know about migrating the apps. It just depends on how old the other Mac is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, when I got my new M1, when we got, when, you know, when you and I bought the new M1 mini year and a half at, ago, about a year and a half ago at the same time. Uh, and I tried to, I had to migrate from the old one to the new one. Somehow it burned out the old one and which reduced its value a whole lot and was not easy to get fixed. We're not exactly sure why it did that, but you know, but that's, that's the one great thing about iCloud. Well, one of the great things about iCloud is that, you know, you just sign in and, and it just, it transfers everything. Yeah. It's, it's almost as long as you're doing cloud backups with iCloud and you have all your contacts, your counter stuff, your notes and everything that you want to be backed up. Um, it's almost better to just start new and not migrate. And just let iCloud bring in the content you need. And then if there's other files you can bring over, you want to copy over, that's fine. But um, going from an old system, you don't want to migrate over problems. So if your user account had little issues or things were just funky, um, don't migrate. If it was working perfectly and you were already on the most current update of the Mac OS and the machine isn't eight, nine years old, probably will be okay. But I like fresh starts. I just find it almost always comes out better when I'm starting from a fresh machine without migrating everything over. That's just been my experience. Yeah. Have you noticed that, I mean, my Mac seems to be doing weird things. And I, I mean, I love it. It's fast and everything. It's fast and quiet. Yeah. It's fast and quiet. But sometimes weird stuff happens. You know, things will get lost. I was working on Audition the, uh, earlier today. And I couldn't find the razor blade and all the other stuff. I'm like, where did it go? And I'm like, looking. But that was an audition. It wasn't in Mac OS. It was in the app itself, huh? It was in the app itself. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, but then I clicked on the top thing and suddenly reappeared. I'm like, well, well where'd you go? Yeah. I mean, my MacBook Air, the one I'm using right now, is on not Mac OS Monterey. I mm-hmm. think you are too, right? Twelve yeah. point. Are oh, you yeah. on twelve point four? I'm always on the latest. Thing. All right. I, I they fixed. They're still the fixing bugs. And what I tell people ad nauseum is that if you're on the current OS, you're on the newest OS. When you're on the newest OS, you're not on the best OS because they're still fixing it. The best OS was the last Last OS, (laughs) the one that's not being repaired anymore. That's already had all the patches and it's fully, fully baked. So in my opinion, probably the best OS is still Big Sur, um, whereas Monterey is still going through its growing pains. So, yeah, things are going to be a little bit funky. Will they still be funky when Ventura comes out? Gosh, I hope not. I hope everything has been fully repaired, but it's still 12.4. There could be a 12.5, a 12.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The last update I got for Big Sur was 
5.7, I think. So they're still updating um, to get rid of some bugs and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, this is technology. It ain't getting easier. We And, and, and when you're going to be on the newest thing, expect there to be some unpredictable things that uh, take a little bit of patience to, to sort out. Yeah. So be, be prepared. Don't wipe the old computer and donate it the next day. Right. Exactly. Keep it around for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and for one last thing, Douglas voice guy says, would love to see a video of Dan's mic mod. If one exists, no, oh. you wouldn't. I mean, it's, you know, tubes and screwdrivers and all sorts of stuff. It took hours and hours. It, it was, no, it didn't take hours, but it was, uh, <laughs> it's just soldering and following the instructions. You know, go over to mikeparts.com. Exactly. Yeah. They probably have some fun good videos stuff. over there. Absolutely. I all righty. Well, guess what? Another hour of your life has gone by and look how much better informed you are. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be wrapping things up right after this. So don't go away. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. What's it like for you when you check your email and there is a voiceover audition waiting for you to dive in and you go, great, this is awesome. And then that fear starts to creep in. Am I good enough? Do I know what I'm doing? Am I going to give them what they want? Listen, I've been there. And so has my friend Michael Kostroff, who is now one of my voiceover clients. Very excited about that. He's applied his Audition Psych 101 process and method to voiceover. And it's awesome. He's got three free uh, lessons right now that are available at auditionpsych101.com slash join. That's auditionpsych101.com slash join. Go watch these right now. By the time you watch this, maybe they're all out. Who knows? But it's worth every moment to help you get your mind right on the psychology of auditioning. auditionpsych101.com slash join. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back. Good Enjoy. to hear her voice again. I think you're, <laughs> I think you're still muted. Oh, man. I think I'm not muted because uh, I hear myself. <laughs> well, I, I hear you too, but it says, it says you're muted. Oh, well, well muted. I've been muted the whole time because we're running sound through you tonight. Ah, well, that would explain it. <laughs> I know, exactly. All right. Well, it's actually finally did figure that out. Yes. <laughs> well, you've seen another hour of absolute magnificent technology. Sort of. Flawless. It's, yeah. And, <laughs> well, we'll just forget the less. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. This was, this was a fun day. We're running around, getting things edited. And, yeah, and, I really ran us ragged today, didn't I? <laughs> you, you did. But at least we got to eat a little bit. Uh, who are, well, next week on the show, yeah. we have another great guest who that's going to be. I'll let exactly. you know soon. We will know probably sooner than later. Uh, let's see here. Who are our donors this week? We've got Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Tom Pinto, Shelly Evelino, Patty Gibbons, Greg Thomas, a doctor voice, Antland Productions, and the one and only, yes, I, Martha Khan. Martha Khan. Yes. I haven't seen Martha in a while. Um, anyway, it's great that you're here and uh, we really appreciate it. Once again, if you need help with your home voice over studio, all you got to do is if you want to talk to me, I'll be happy to talk to you if I'm home or I'm by my phone. Go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and there's all sorts of options there. You can 
send me your audio on my specimen collection cup or contact me directly and uh, I can help you if you're just starting out or if you got a tech problem or any of those things go on over I can help you out but George does that as well and he's over at George the dot tech and uh when you're watching this if you're quick enough you can grab the webinar I'm going to be teaching all August 2nd for Universal Audio Apollo for VO covering everything to do with the Apollo for the voice actor who decided to plunge into buying one because somebody else said you should get one of these <laughs> and it wasn't us it but if you bought us. one I'll I'll navigate you through the mess and show you how to set it up and that's on the webinar that's uh you can sign up at georgethetechtech slash webinars yeah. great if you're a musician voiceover it's gonna mess you up a great if bit. you're a producer yeah but if you're just a voice actor who wants to audition and book a job sometimes whew, way it, more than keep you it need. simple yeah which is the most important thing yeah uh we need to thank our amazing sponsors who are just great people aside from being great sponsors like harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra source elements boheroes.com voiceactorwebsites.com and jmc demos and, and worldvoices.org that's world dash dash voices dot or i'm the president i should know that <laughs> uh dot org the industry association of voiceover talent freelance voiceover talent uh thank you to jeff holman got all those questions Thanks, in there jeff. was paying attention tonight we really appreciate that and he's clearly moving to a much nicer house uh, and <laughs> sumerlino our wonderful technical director for getting it done and of course lee penny because he's lee penny Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. You know, this is not an easy business. Voiceover takes all sorts of things. You got to have talent. If you don't have talent, why even try it? You got to have, uh, it, you know, quiet, quiet. You got to have a, you have to have good bas business acumen. We had uh, great marketing. Yeah. Kelly Buttrick on last week and she was talking about, you got to, you got to get yourself out there. No one's going to find the work for you. You got to go do it. Good people skills. Right. But it's really important that your audio sound good but the bottom line is if it sounds good it is good that's going to do it for us i'm dan leonard and i'm george widow and this is voiceover body shop or vo bs tech talk tech talk tech talk we'll see you next week have a good one everybody